need for some fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration? We've got it all. I'm Carol O'Halloran and welcome to the show. Now a lot of you watching will be caring for loved ones, elderly parents, children, a spouse or other family members maybe. Don't miss out on the first segment today. We're chatting to Carers Victoria about how they can support you as a carer. If you can, get on your feet and join us in the five minute fitness or just do it sitting in your chair. And lastly, we're going to be inspired by Perry Cho, who took up some new hobbies in his 70s. Most of us watching today will know someone who is looking after an elderly parent or maybe a spouse. Well, would you believe in 2018, the Australian Bureau of Statistics identified 2.65 million Australians doing an informal unpaid caring role. That's one in 10 Australians. And today we're having a chat to the CEO of Carers Victoria, Judith Abbott, and she's going to tell us what they're doing to support carers in our community. Hi Judith, welcome to Over 50 So What? Oh, thanks Carol, it's great to be here. I mean the statistics are phenomenal how many carers we have in the community. Can you just tell us who qualifies as a carer? You know, what is a carer? Absolutely. So we are talking about unpaid carers. So they're people like family members and friends and others in the community who help out someone who might be living with an age-related disability, with a health condition. It might be caring for them in the home most of the day. It might be taking them out for shopping. It's a whole range of things, but they're things that without that kind of care, those people couldn't stay at home alone. And some of them don't necessarily have to be living full time with the person to be considered a carer, is that right? That's absolutely correct. Um, many, many people aren't living with the person they care for, but they'll drop in, they'll do things with them and they'll just help make sure that they're okay. So can you tell us who Carers Victoria is and what sort of things that you do? Sure. So we, not surprisingly, have a Victorian <laughs> focus. And to put it in context, by 2026, we think there'll be one million unpaid carers in Victoria alone. Wow. So something like one in eight. So we're all going to know a carer, need a carer or be a carer. And one of the challenges of caring is that people can get really isolated if you're spending a lot of your time supporting somebody else. And so we do a range of things that are about keeping carers abreast of what information, news and events is around. We do events for carers, we do training sessions for carers, and we provide some government funded support for carers who, for example, might need some respite. Yes, I mean, I know personally myself, people that, you know, are caring 24 seven, they actually don't even hardly get out of the house at all. Absolutely. And, and the data tells us that carers often experience social isolation and loneliness, something like two times the rates of other Australians. So it's a really important gig, but can be a really tough one. So some of the challenges for carers, are you saying, is social connection, they can't get out of the house. I mean, it's just physically and mentally mm -hmm. and, and emotionally draining, you know, taking care of a lot of people all mm -hmm. day, having to, do, especially if they need intensive care, like mm -hmm. having showers and things like that as well. So how can you, you mentioned you give them, you can organise the respite side. Mm -hmm. So there are a range of government funded services providing respite and other things across the state. So carers can call Carers Victoria and we can often tell them which service providers are in their local neighbourhood. We also can do things like give them access to education and training about everything from how to access the aged care system, through to how to look after yourself, how to, you know, how to write for purpose. I mean, a lot of them will be feeling pretty overwhelmed and, and the thought of having to do a course or a workshop might be just a bit too much. Mm -hmm. um, how ca else can you help people feel uh, a bit more comfortable? There's a lot of information on our website, but another important piece of the puzzle can be connecting them to a local carer support group. If I'm a carer, it means, um, and I live on the Mornington Peninsula, I can be connected into a carer support group, which means I can catch up with other people who are in a similar circumstance. Sometimes they'll give me tips or tricks on how to find things locally, and it just gives you a bit of time out, um, surrounded by people who may be in a similar circumstance to you. Yeah, like you said, this the isolation thing, and you're the mm. only one that's going through this and being able to have that shared experience. A another real pressure at the moment is a financial one, because often if you're an unpaid carer, 
you can't afford to hold paid employment or you can't work as many hours as you might otherwise choose. You have extra costs and with the cost of living going up, carers are really feeling that. We're seeing many more carers contacting us who are experiencing financial stress or distress. So being able to offer access to funded services can be really important. So you can assist people to work through that quagmire of, mm-hmm. of things that are available yes. and maybe get some assistance. Now, can you tell us a bit more about the financial assistance you might get as an unpaid carer? Some carers will be eligible for a Victorian Government Carers Card and that will do things like give them concessions on public transport and some other discounts. Or carers might be able to access government funded services, either state state funded respite or through the federal government there's something called the carer gateway and that can give unpaid carers access to counselling. So things like household help like Mm -hmm. helping with personal care or helping with chores around the house are you able to assist in that area as well? Some of the providers who are funded by the Victorian government do that we can make that available to carers in Melbourne's west but there are other providers across the state. So we've mentioned a few things we've mentioned Mm -hmm. like personal care household care Mm -hmm. we mentioned financial support and then support with the connecting with other carers in a similar mm-hmm. position. Yes. Is there is there anything else that you actually provide? You've got the workshops and the training. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, and I think you have events. We do. So we run uh, we run events across the state called Mingles, which uh, basically give carers a chance to come together uh have some morning tea or lunch together there'll be free entertainment and it's just a bit of time out so it's a bit of a bit of fun for them as well and there's also sometimes local councils have activities so increasingly we're connecting to local councils and to neighborhood houses so there's um things like walking groups that neighborhood houses victoria runs but often the challenge is when you're a carer you're just so busy Mm -hmm. and the systems you've got to work with are so complex that Having an organisation like Carers Victoria that can help you understand what might be available where can be really critical. So how do people get hold of you? So if someone knows someone who's doing a caring role and thinks, Mm -hmm. oh, that'd be great, I wonder if they know about Mm -hmm. all this, or for carers watching today. Two main options. They can find us via our website, which is carersvictoria.org.au, or they can contact our free call number, which is 1800 514 845 and there'll be someone friendly on the end of the phone that can help find them um, and connect them to some things that might support them in their role. Now we do have a lot of people watching in other states of Australia too so for those people um, who would you suggest they contact? So there are carer organisations like Carers Victoria in every state and territory. People can also contact the Carer Gateway which is a national service and the Carer Gateway can also help help them connect to services. So Carer's Gateway, okay, mm-hmm. that, that sticks in your brain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. It's a, another way of getting into the service system. That's an Australian government funded service system. So it does different things more in the counselling space uh, and, and some of the peer support space. Well, Judith, you're doing some amazing things. And from your stats, it looks like your job's going to get bigger and bigger over the next five or 10 years. So thanks for sharing all that information with us. Thanks, Carol. Carer's Victoria, I've found have been great for myself and my family. They support the carer. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we forget in in our world is looking after ourselves. So I've raised four children, two with the disability, and sometimes it felt like I was raising six children. But Carers Vic have given you, as a carer, the support and the understanding that you're not forgotten. Five Minute Fitness. We've got fabulous Faye in the chair. So if you're not mobile enough to stand up, just do it sitting down. Up on your feet. You might recognise this song. This is actually the theme song for Over 50 So What. Now we're going to take a step touch. Step touch. And then a clap. That's it. Woohoo! We have a woohoo! Woohoo! 
And now we're gonna take two steps this way. One, two. One, two. One, two. Add a cut. Yeah. Woohoo! Really get into it. Now we're gonna add a kick on the end. Kick. 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 That's it. You got it. We got it. Step together, step. Kick. Woohoo! Yeah! Back to the middle. And walk. If you want to raise your metabolism, get your knees a bit higher. All right, now we go. One, two, three, tap. Two, three, tap. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, tap. We got it? Yep. Do you think we can go forward and back? Let's try. Forward. Back. Forward. Just make sure there's a clear space on the floor in your living room. No tripping over anything. Now we add an arm. Woo. Hold it there. If you want to make it less intense, just drop the arms. Okay, walking on the spot. Ready, step touch. Doesn't matter if it's cold and you've got a puffer jacket on. Just go to the park and do some moves. Faye said she's getting hot. Okay, two steps. A bit of a kick. That's it. See, that was easy, wasn't it? Hold it there. One, two, three. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, tap. One, two, tap. One, two, tap. Tap. Okay, ready? Come forward. That's it. Yes. A few more. Watch out for the cat or the dog. Where are they hiding? <laughs> Hold it there. And we're doing single taps to the side. Side. Woo! Good job. Five minutes a day. Previously, we chatted to Perry Cho, who is the inspiring gardener who took up producing his own produce later in life. Well, on Everyday Legend today, we're going to take a look at who Perry really is and why we should all look at taking up a new hobby, and maybe one of those hobbies is becoming more active in the garden. Hi, Perry. Hi, Carol. Welcome to Over 50 So What. <laughs> Thank you. Now, over, over 50 So What means, well, it doesn't matter if you've never been a gardener, you've never been a photographer, you've never done whatever, it's, it's not an excuse. You can try something new later in life. 
Now, you were an accountant for many, many years. Yes, I, I, I was an accountant for 43 years. And then later you decided to take up some new hobbies. Can you tell us about that? Well, actually, I, I had lots of different hobbies, I guess. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I, 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 I played golf. <laughs> I wasn't very talented in it, but I practiced and I practiced. I got down to a handicap of 12. One, most of the competitions when my handicap was coming down. Uh, then I took up programming and I started selling programs to uh, accountants as well. So. So that was my, they were the hobbies uh, while I was working. Yes, I, I also took up photography. It's a passion of mine. I love taking photography and I did a lot of landscape photography. I did a lot of uh, macro pho photography, food photography, studio pho photography. And, um, and lately in life, I, st I ventured into bird photography. And, um, and each year I make a, a calendar and um, and um, and I sell it, and whatever sales I get, I donate to charity. So yes, I was very impressed with your photos of the nine robins that you've got round here. Can you tell us about the, your passion for the taking photos of birds and what's involved in taking those photos? Well, first of all, you need a long lens. I mean, like I mean, you, a 400 mil will be suffi sufficient, but uh, a 600 is better, and an 800 is even better. So, uh, like most hobbies, you know, whatever you buy is never enough. And whatever lenses you buy is not long enough. So you keep getting bigger and bigger. So it gets pretty expensive. But, but once again, you need passion. Uh, when I decide to photograph a bird, I'll go back to the same spot. I, if I find a location of a bird that I would love to photograph, I tend to go back to the same spot. It could take 50, 50 trips. Even if I could travel 200 kilometers to the same spot, if I have to do it, I do it. And so you sit on a spot for eight hours and don't move and you just wait for the bird to come. And so uh, I started photographing robins uh, and I first thought there was only one robin in Australia, the red robin. Everyone talks about the red robin. You know red robin. You know, in England you got the red robin, beautiful red robin. In Australia we have the red robin too. But I was shocked to find out that in Victoria alone, there are nine robins. So once I found that out, that was it. You're on I a was, mission. <laughs> I was on a mission. And uh, I started uh, trying to get all the different robins. And the, the, my, most, my favorite robin was the, the rose robin, because that was the name of my wife. And, and so I just I was so determined to get it. And guess what? That's the hardest robin to photograph, because it's a they tend to stay on the treetop and they seldom come down to the lower level of, of, of the uh, branches. Uh, but finally I got the rose robin and, and the other one that is beautiful is the pink robin which you were surprised when, you first, when I showed to you because nobody believed that you actually get a bird with pink feathers yeah. in it. It's, it's, yeah. it's such a stunning colour and I, I, I posted on Facebook and, and, I, I, I had, and, and on one post I had 65,000 likes and I was just shocked. You know, 2,000 comments, 65,000 likes, and people just love the pink robin. It, it, it's just so, it's such a unique colour. So tell us about the calendars you put together and how you raise money. Well, over the years we, 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 we make a calendar and, 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 and so one day a friend of mine and I decided that, that, that we should donate to charity and, and I was able to get a business partner who pays for the printing of the calendars and, and, and he pays for all the printing costs and I just go to the businesses and say, Do, would you like to buy, buy this package? And the first year we saw, we thought we might get five, five, five six thousand sales and we'll be really happy and we got $21,000 sales the first year. Then we thought, mm, if we can do 21,000 one year, we can do better. And that first year we did was of landscape photography. So then we decided we'll do some birds. And we got $42,288 in sales and we, we donated the, the first 61000 the two years, to, to mental health. And, and we thought, we can do better than that. So last year we got $62,000 and we were just absolutely stunned by the support we got. So, um, so that, that, that's the story of it. And, and, and this year, uh, because I had a cataract operation, uh, I did not do one for, for 2023, but I might get back onto it. Now tell us about your other hobby, the, the garden and the producing your own vegetables. It's only 18 months since I started growing vegetables and I, I have learned an exceptional 
uh, lot from 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 the public, you know, friends, neighbors, uh, through Facebooks. And I, I've, I've and, and one of the things about growing veggies too is not just about growing veg vegetables, is mixing with the people of, of the same uh, uh, with the same hobby. And I've de developed a lot of friendship uh, through that because they, they share they sh they share their, their their seedlings and they they share their their way they grow and 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 the, the good part is that every season is different and that's why you need to get ex experienced people to tell you what to do. Perry, you're 70 now, yes. and there's some people obviously under under 70 watching yes. the show, but in 50 and 70, but there's some even up to 90 watching this show. Yes. What are your tips on what to, how to make the most out of life? Well, whatever whatever you do, you 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 got to have passion. I mean, that's the secret ingredients to any hobby. If you have, don't have passion, you 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 won't won't be able to get the results that 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 you want. The more you put into it, the the, the better the result you get. So and and that puts the 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 the, uh, the excitement into to 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 our hobby. Um, and and you look forward uh, to 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 the hobby, and you start growing more exotic plants and vegetables, and and it's, it becomes a challenge. Uh, but once again, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. And but I'm just trying to show you that the the the, 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 the extremities between the two, two the, the, within the the hobby of growing vegetables. You can you you can either go right into it, or you can just do your basics. Just grow the necessary food that you like to eat. So Perry, what are your tips for living a long, healthy, quality life? You need to exercise, and that's why I take, take up golf. And, 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 and one of the fantastic things about it, life is that my wife and I are a very good team. Um, she, she knows that I have a stressful uh, work uh, have, uh, environment, and she used to say, Perry, you need to exercise, you need to go and play golf. And how good is that for a wife <laughs> telling me to go and play golf after working five, six days of the week and say, you go and work, go, go and enjoy playing golf. So, so that really helped me because um, uh, having exercise it's very important. You, you, you have to exercise. That's why I took up vegetable gardening as well, because you exercise. And, and, and you can see by, by, by what I've set up, I built everything myself. I, I had, um, I had uh, to buy t 40, 50 uh, pieces of timber uh, to, to, to lay the foundations. And I had to carry all those, you know, down from the front to the back garden. Uh, so, you know, but I did it in my own pace. I mean, in my younger days, I would do the same thing in a day. But now I do the same thing in a week. So take your time, take your time. Do, do not rush into anything. You just got to stay active. If you don't stay active, you rot, you rot. Well, Perry, thanks so much for sharing your words of wisdom and your inspiration with us. And I'm sure you've inspired a lot of people watching today to just get out from behind the TV watching us <laughs> and to get out into the garden and try something new. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Have you ever thought I'd really like to take up I just don't have the time to do it now, but I'll, when I retire, I'll do it. What is that thing that you've always been interested in? For Perry, it was gardening and photography. What is your thing? Just do it. And please send us a message and tell us what hobbies you've taken up. Connect with us through Facebook, YouTube or Insta. Over 50, so what? For more info on Carers Victoria or any guest you see on the show, please go to our website, carolohalloran.com. Are you doing some fitness every day? Even doing five minute fitness every day is awesome. Go to the YouTube channel and check out the five minute fitness playlist. Thanks for watching today. I'm Carol, over 50, so what? watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, 
Get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what? <laughs>